little bit about uh, production applications, native code, and um, how that relates to what we've been doing in the workshop so far. Uh, so you may have noticed that everything we've done has been only JavaScript. Uh, we've talked a lot about how there's a whole native side to a React Native application. Um, and uh, there are a couple of important things to uh, bear in mind when uh, looking at building like a production application, right? So um, the Expo app uh, includes React Native and then also includes all of this Expo X SDK that we build. Um, and so the JavaScript you're writing is for the most part just React Native JavaScript. But if you were to um, deploy something to like the iTunes App Store or the Google Play Store, uh, which are you know where most production mobile applications end up, uh, then you would have to have like a, a binary to upload, right? Um, and Expo can manage that binary for you. Uh, if you decide like, hey, Expo has everything I need, I trust these guys, they're awesome, thanks, we are awesome. Um, uh, you can look at our docs. We have a service that will build an iOS app for you on our servers, it'll build an Android app for you on our servers, and this is like, kind of like a white box version of the Expo runtime. With your branding and your certificates, it'll handle push notifications for you. It's great, but I'm not here to sell Expo. Um, so the other route, which um, you know, we don't ha handle everything for you, uh, is what happens after like, you eject from Create React Native App. So lots of you set up Create React Native App projects. That runs uh, with the Expo client. And um, we handle the native code for you. So if you don't want to use Expo's build service, or for example, you need to include some functionality that's not part of the Expo client, um, which you know we're trying to make less common, but is still pretty common these days to have some need, um, then if you're in Create React Native App, what you would do is eject. Um, that allows you to set up your own uh, Xcode and Android Studio projects from which you'll build kind of your binary half of your JavaScript application, right? So remember, React Native has JavaScript, speaks over bridges to binaries. Um, if you're not using our provided binaries, then you gotta build your own. Um, this is incidentally where there's some pain with React Native upgrades. Uh, compile times can be kind of long, so like, you know, definitely be aware that there is work to do on that side, aside from building your UI in JavaScript. Um, but if you need to do that for any reason, there's a pretty clear path to do so. Um, so what I'm gonna show you in a second is uh, called ejecting from Create React Native App. Uh, this sets up your uh, Xcode and Android Studio projects for you. And then we can run things like this React Native link command. So if you've been looking at React Native packages, like, hey, maybe this thing has an NPM package that supports what I need to do. Uh, lots of those packages will have steps that include React Native link. Or if they were published less recently, they might have a step like RNPM uh, link, which is, you know, been integrated and updated as part of the React Native command line, but you might still see that. You might also see someone who says like, hey, open your Xcode project and add this path to your header search paths, uh, or add this line to your Gradle file, right? Um, these are all part of like the native build configuration. Uh, there's so much to React Native that we can't talk a lot about the native half, but we'll, um, we'll give you a little taste here and give you a few jumping off points and a few uh, a few warnings about entering into that whole world. So um, the first thing that we do, like any good demo, is run a command on the command line. So we have a fresh create React Native App project here. Um, we have a few options. You can use Expo Kit, like if you want the Expo APIs, but to still build your own client, you can do that. But there's some extra complexity there. We'll just talk about raw React Native today. Um, so let's call this Bront, and we can just accept the defaults. Um, so this will make some changes to your project. It runs under the hood this command from the React Native command line called React Native Eject, which essentially reinitializes the native code. Um, and it's actually, it's one way to upgrade the native code in your React Native project. Um, so if we uh, look at our project now, we have, an Android folder, or directory rather, because we're on a Mac, and an iOS folder. Um, if we look inside, for example, the iOS folder, we have an Xcode project file. And 
uh, because React Native now supports tvOS when you're building your own binaries. We also have tvOS files. Um, if we look inside workshop project demo, or workshop eject demo, sorry, um, we have some Objective-C, some header files, everything you'd expect from like a native mobile app. So uh, one thing we might want to do, for example, um, I'm not gonna cover like deploying this to the App Store, that's like a whole process, lots of ink has been spilled on it, you can use tools like Fastlane to make it a lot smoother if you're not familiar. Um, but one thing that's really common when you're in uh, native Objective-C land is to include some uh, native library. So for example, um, Expo includes vector icons, but if you want to include vector icons in your native project, or this is the same if you ran like React Native Init, which has no Expo portion whatsoever, it just starts you off right in building your own native code. Um, we can add that to our project here. This does some basic stuff, and um, one thing that I want to show you is uh, usually you want to follow the readme uh, for the package that you're installing, right? Uh, because it will have important instructions on how to do this. Lots of packages have some step that you need to take in addition to uh, NPM installing them. So they have this manual option here. You can install it with CocoaPods. Um, and then they also have a React Native link option, right? Um, it's very important anytime you're working on the native code side of your project, like follow the library author's instructions because sometimes they had to do some kind of dark magic to make everything play nicely together. Um, so this guy says we can run React Native link and we should be all good to go. So it did a little bit of, of work here for us. Um, if we uh, open up our project here, in code. Uh, let's see, I think we want to import like Ionicons. And let's also uh, open up the simulator. So now that we're building our own native code, um, we need to run Xcode build in the background. Oh, Brent has something to remind me. What's up? Okay. It's like oh right, yeah. That. Uh -oh. You can see I work a lot on this. Hmm. Okay, there we go. Cool. Um, so we've imported Ionicons here. In the background, we can see Xcode's compiling. This is building our own kind of bespoke version of the binary half of our application, analogous to what you install from the App Store when you install Expo. Um, this can sometimes take some time. And uh, then also, we can see in a separate terminal window here that the React Native CLI has started the packager for us over here. Um, some things to note once you've gone down this route is uh, that things like logging don't automatically get forwarded here. So there's some docs in the React Native docs about how to get your console.logs out of the system logs. Um, and there are a few other things that aren't, uh, that aren't handled automatically. Momentarily here, we should see a bundle loading in our simulator. If we don't, however, I won't be terribly surprised because sometimes troubleshooting Xcode can be a little bit of a pain. Today, Things are on our side. Um, so now we can, for example, I mean, I can't even remember the. Brent, what are some props for this? Let's look at the docs. Okay, uh, let's see, I think we have a name prop. Whoa, this is not my laptop. I apologize for the, maybe this works, I don't think it does. Okay, so I think this was the wrong package to pick for a demo, I apologize. Um, yeah, Brent's gonna demo some stuff. So 
the important thing here to remember is that if you start in CRNA, um, you can eject anytime you need your own native code. Um, there's some complexity associated with that, so like be prepared to handle some Xcode uh, project. Oh, thank you. There you go. Congratulations. You have a home icon on your home screen. Um, there's some configuration to wrangle. Uh, if you do need to write your own native modules, it's not quite as straightforward as uh, just writing some Android and iOS code. There's a little bit extra to be aware of, and um, that's what James is going to talk about now.